Chris Enoch, the pastor of the Marion Center Presbyterian Church, or the Presbyterian Church of Marion, which is the correct title, brought to us this morning by Marcus and Mac, a law firm representing injured people. Chris, how are you? I am doing quite well. Hey, we, doing well. We talked, you and I, a few months ago, right before the pandemic hit, about a really neat ministry effort of the Presbyterian Church of Marion uh, involving the Navajo Nation, and uh, particularly, I think we were focused on the state of Arizona, and then the pandemic hit, uh, which, uh, as I said earlier, is a sentence when we think about 2020 is uh, going to be a sentence that is repeated quite often, and then came the pandemic. Um, it has hit the Navajo Nation really hard, hasn't it? it? It has hit extremely hard. This is the week that 20 of us from Marion Center were supposed to be heading out to the Navajo Nation, and well, obviously, we have had to cancel that trip. Well, postpone it. Let me use the word postpone. We're hoping to go next year. Mm-hmm. Uh, and it wasn't simply because of what was going on with us. But the Navajo Nation has been hit extremely hard. There's actually, it has the highest incident of COVID-19 uh, illness uh, per capita in the United States, more than New York per capita or New Jersey. And... um it's just really amazing, and it's causing some real secondary issues out there on the reservation. Yeah, really. I'm looking at the, the graph, the scale of the uh, coronavirus uh, hitting the Navajo Nation. It's far worse than it is, it seems, for any other demographic. And, and obviously, that's going to hit a particular population like, like that uh, in, in very, very deep and, and ways that uh, we probably can't even imagine. Uh, so... Maybe it's uh, time for us to review what the ministry effort is and what the trip would have been about, and uh, then maybe there are ways that we can reach out and we can help them anyway. Um, I, As I explained a, a few months ago, my wife and I have a long-term relationship with a, a church and a group of people out there in a little community called Chin Lee. It's in northeast Arizona. And... Wherever I've been, we've managed to do trips out there to work around uh, Trinity Presbyterian Church and the area, and this trip would have been very similar. We would have had certain things that we uh, would have been called to do around the church, would have led one Sunday in worship. Whenever I'm out there, I usually preach once or twice, and and again, uh, it's become a real interest with us folks uh, at the Marion Center Church, and uh, 20 of us were going to head out there, but like I said, it's it's a real real problem out there right now, and it's not just the illness. What it has created is a real problem with food. Mm. Yeah, think about this. The Navajo Nation is the size of West Virginia. 200,000 people live across the reservation. The largest community on the reservation is about 8,000 people, which means most of the people are spread out all over that high desert area. That's the way traditionally Navajo live, and generally speaking, it's a great way to live. That being said, you have just various small stores in some of the communities. Those stores have been overwhelmed. Where we tend to serve, if we really need larger supplies, we would drive two and a half hours to Gallup, New Mexico. That town, because of the virus, was actually shut down completely three wow. weeks ago. Don't know what the situation there is now. And um, so so where else do you have to go? You have to go to Farmington, New Mexico. That town's been overwhelmed a bit. Our friends actually drive three hours to the west to get to Flagstaff, Arizona, to get food. And there's a real problem because... They're fortunate they can do that. A lot of the people scattered living all over can't. So there's a real food issue on the reservation right now, not to mention the illness issue. That's the main thing. But the secondary effect is getting food to people is, is a problem there right now. Yeah, well, and one of the things that folks might say is, okay, well, how can I donate to make this happen? But the problem is deeper than that is actually physically getting the food to them. Gallup is open, by the way, now. Uh, But still, you mentioned the distance that it uh, takes in order to get there, and that's just one of their sources and and one of their primary sources. Uh, But the issue is much deeper than just, uh, you you know, there are so many issues out there, we think we can just throw some money at it and it'll be fine, and and you can't. No, no, you can't. And we we have friends, um, dear friends there at the church, Jasper and Marilyn So, who are doing everything they can 
probably putting themselves at such at, at some risk driving all over the desert uh, uh, bringing food to people assuming they can get the food mm-hmm. and uh, again that's an issue I, I I would make a suggestion if anyone is interested in wanting to help out there is one organization that's been referred to me called the Navajo Relief Fund and they're very specifically working on the food issue and so if anyone wants to donate to that, you could go to actually our church's website, marionpress.org, and I've put a link up there to um, the Navajo Relief Fund. That appears to me to be one of the best ways to try to help out out there. Mm-hmm. My my wife and I are actually taking a trip, uh, hopefully towards the end of August, and we'll probably wind up on the Navajo Reservation ourselves. But again, I, I put calls out there to my friend about every other week and trying to get a feel, not just for what's happening, but how we can help. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And well, getting, like you said, getting food there is an issue. <laughs> yeah, it, it very much is. Um, and and one of the things we need to be sure of, and, and you are a church, so you know this, is uh, you know there's a spiritual aspect to all of this as well, and that must be addressed uh, too. Well, it, it is. And, and part of what, what has gone on, actually, what, what kicked off, the spread was actually a large Christian gathering, which, which is kind of unfortunate, but what we need to be honest about that. It was a large Christian gathering that brought in people from all over the reservation. The main speaker apparently had the virus, and it spread around. But, yeah, definitely. I mean, I would encourage people out there, be praying for, you know, the, the people on the Navajo Indian Reservation. Um, we have found, especially on our trips out there, there are people who – understand what it means to struggle, understands in, in our particular situation what it means to really rely on Jesus mm-hmm. more than any of us ever had. <laughs> Life's well, a struggle there to begin with, but right now is just difficult. Talking to the Reverend Chris Enoch from the Presbyterian Church of Marion about um, the Navajo tribe in uh, a particular uh, Navajo tribe in, in New Mexico and uh, their struggles with COVID-19 and uh, obviously that needs to be developed more. Who are these people? Um, how big is the reservation on which they live? Um, what are some of the everyday difficulties that even without the pandemic that they would be dealing with? Reservation itself is about the size of West Virginia. If I can't remember, it's larger than eight or nine other states. It's, it's about the size of New England. So the place is huge with 200,000 people scattered across it. They, they tend not to want to live in communities. So what are the everyday problems? Well, obviously, it's a high desert, so there's water. And actually, they think that's kind of part of the problem with the spread of it, because there's not enough uh, water just, just for washing your hands constantly, constantly, like we've been told to do here in Pennsylvania. Uh, the, the isolation, which you think wouldn't allow for the spread of of the virus, but then the issues there are in one household, there might be three or four generations of people. So once it spreads in there, it spreads more, it gets to the most vulnerable elderly. They're mourning the fact that they're losing some of their older storytellers. Mm-hmm. Now we've heard about the code talkers. Most of them are gone. Uh, my, our good friend out there, his father was one. But just the storytellers, the people that hold on to the traditions of the Navajo, which are really neat traditions if you get to understand the way that they live, they're losing a lot of that generation right now, and they're mourning that. Sure, so, absolutely. So there's, there's isolation probably about, I don't know the figures, probably about 40% of the people who live on the reservation do not have running water. Hmm. They have to go and retrieve the water. That's the way they've always done that, or it gets delivered to them. Um, there's a big effort out there, volunteer effort, um, just to bring electricity to where all the people are, because literally they're scattered all over this high desert. You wouldn't know it if you drive through during the day, but if you drive through at night, you'll see lights from gen- um, generators or whatever just all over the place. Yeah, 200,000 people scattered over about 27,000 square miles. Yeah, you're 200,000 people in the state of West Virginia for for perspective. Uh, that's like yeah. your your next door neighbor lives 30 some miles away. Um, exactly. Yeah. Uh so it's not exactly going next door for a cup of sugar. <laughs> <laughs> no. Or 
some basic food items and if transportation can be an issue. Yeah. Yeah. Growing, you know, growing you know, their own crops, lot, not, not really an option out there uh, because of the, the weather conditions. And uh, so all of those issues have to come into play. Yeah. Um, you know, there, there are some areas they can grow crops where the water flows out of some of the canyons, but most of that area, that's a high, very dry desert. Yeah. Okay. So you mentioned that folks can go to your church's website and uh, find out more information. Uh, what is that website? Yeah, it's marionpress.org. Press with one and I've put, Yeah, marionpress, P-R-E-S, dot org. And, I've, and I put a link on the opening page. I put it up yesterday mm-hmm. for the organization that I think looks like they're addressing the issue directly. And okay. the, the biggest issue right now being food. Okay. Very, so, very good. Uh, I would encourage people, if that's what they want to do, go that direction. People want to know what's going on at the Presbyterian Church of Marion right now in terms of uh, opening up for services and everything. They can get that information, too. But tell us, what's going on? We are going to be opening back up for worship on June 21st. Uh, I, I'm calling this a cautious reopening. We're going to maintain social uh, spacing, and we're encouraging people to, to, um, to wear masks. Probably won't be doing any singing to get started with. I, I've got to figure those things out. And we're also going to try to maintain an, an online presence. We've had a pretty good online uh, presence with doing worship on YouTube. So we're still figuring that out. But we're, we're opening up on June 21st, and we're praying along with everyone else that things are just going to get better and better. Christina. But again, you know, things are, might be getting better here, but, you know, we have hearts and and out there on the Navajo Indian Reservation. And it would really, please, folks, be praying for them. Absolutely. Absolutely. Chris Enoch, thanks so much for spending some time with us today. Todd, thank you very much for the time. Have a wonderful day. You too. God bless. You too. God bless.